So welcome, welcome. Uh, today is uh, Sunday, Sunday, June the 11th, and uh, half the year is almost gone by. So it really sometimes, you know, when we look back, it really amazes me how fast really time goes by, which of course confirms the truth of God's word, which tells us that, uh, you know, he has made our days, our days are as a hand breadth. In uh, Psalm 90, you know, Moses, the man of God, he wrote that, you know, all the days of your years are three score years and 10, which means 70 years. And uh, if by reason of strength, they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Yes. And therefore, that expression that time flies, I mean, it is kind of biblical because it does tell us that, you know, it just, you know, the time that we've been given just flies, is gone in the blink of an eye. And that's the way it is. You know, today I have, uh, yesterday we finished uh, the uh, book of Second Peter. And as I think uh, most of you were here and uh it was uh you know good to go through that short book it's only three chapters but there's a great deal of uh, understanding and teaching that has been uh, given to us provided to us in there and uh you know it was a good study i think and uh that's something which uh is in the future as those videos get posted like i've been posted some of the ones on First Peter that are recorded, uh, you know, three, four weeks ago, and I've been editing, and now, you know, we'll be finishing off uh, posting those ones, and then uh, we'll uh, post the ones in Second Peter. But uh, even those of you folks who, uh, you know, join us on these live meetings, it is my, uh, my you know, hope that uh, once they do get to these videos get uploaded, to uh, YouTube that, you know, you would go back there and uh, use them as uh, study tools and study those uh, books and those, uh, you know, uh, those, uh, the information once again, because uh, just uh, hearing it during the live meeting, I think is not enough. And that's what we should be doing. So uh, today I'm having a little bit of a problem where I am. It's, uh, you know, there's some kind of electrical short circuiting that's going on. So I have somebody here that's been kind of looking at it and fixing it. So it's a little bit not an ideal, uh, you know, uh, time right now to uh, begin a new study. I was thinking of, uh, I started doing a study today on the First Corinthians chapter 15. And I was planning on, you know, starting on that today. But I think I'm just going to... Uh, leave that for now and uh just uh, have a little bit of a of a fellowship with uh with our group here and you know we'll continue our studies uh next week okay so i would uh maybe uh you know invite uh folks that are on here to uh to share you know something about uh whatever they want to something going on in their life something they've been studying you know what's uh what uh anything any subject at all whatsoever i noticed here that uh you know brother sebastian is here he is uh i'm in india right now and he is also in india in southern india so uh sebastian how are you doing yeah. yes brother i'm doing good thanks hi everybody uh, good to hear from you uh you know yes, i know you yeah. are a busy man and uh, you have a lot of uh, traveling that you do, and uh, you meet a lot of people, and mm -hmm. uh, you know you uh, you minister to uh, people all through like basically a large part of southern India, which is a big area. I don't know how you do it, but how are uh, things in that regard? Yeah, uh, everything is fine. Uh, uh, recently, we had a we had a, a a bit of problem in one of our branch churches. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, basically, as you know, we are into church planting. Um, we go to villages where there are no churches, uh, and uh, we just find uh, find out the need of the village, and then we try to uh, uh, help with that need, and right. through that we share the gospel. 
and through that we share the gospel that's how we do that's how we share the gospel so these days it's not that easy to share the gospel to people so we have to find some ways to share the gospel with people so one of the ways is to uh, identify the need of the village and address it and through that share the gospel with people that's how it is these days uh-huh. and uh, so uh, the last uh, month we have been doing a vacation bible school in all our uh, mission fields and churches and recently uh, we were doing bbs in one of our churches and a few people from a nearby temple uh, they just came inside the church and they just stopped the bbs they didn't want the bbs to happen in that village so there was a bit of commotion for a while and then uh, a pastor in that village so he somehow we managed to file a complaint against the people who uh, who wanted to stop the bbs so he found a police officer nearby and then he filed a complaint and then uh, after that everything was fine so it is getting tougher these days it was never like this like 5 years back or even 2 years back it was not like this mm-hmm. uh, i mean it was really it it was it it is it is and it was tough in um, northern part of india north india but not so much in south india but these days it is getting tougher in south india as well so we have been facing uh, quite a few problems like this so yeah that's the situation right now but god has been good to us he's been opening doors for us to share the gospel in new mission fields new villages so which is good yeah it will be good if you pray for protection of our pastors uh, working in villages i have like 14 pastors with me uh they all work in different villages uh in remote villages so one of so one prayer request will be just pray for the protection of our uh, pastors and the families yeah yes that's uh yes that is a little bit of uh you know i would say a surprise in mm. that uh, like down where you are in tamil yeah. nadu and in kerala you know those mm. places historically they have had you know yeah. at least quite a bit of uh, evangelical uh, christian people and churches so it's mm-hmm. it's more so like you said than in northern india so you know yeah. to see to hear about these kind of problems going on there mm. it's a little bit uh, yeah. you know uh, but you know not surprising either because that's yeah. mm-hmm. that's the way things are going in this world and yes that's uh, right yeah you know we uh, well we pray for you and we pray for those pastors you know because yeah, you just understand that do get uh, you know persecutions you know beatings mm-hmm. whatever you know buildings yeah. damaged all mm-hmm. kinds of things go on people don't yeah. understand you know if you are like from uh, the western countries people don't understand mm-hmm. like you know the the, the what happens yeah. here is not like yeah. over there you know where you go to court or something and you try here people just you know they rise up and they'll throw bricks and they'll do all kinds of burn places down and all that kind of stuff happens all the time hmm yeah yes bro so another challenge we are facing is we've been facing this challenge for many years now uh people like i i'm sorry to say this but i just want i just feel like sharing this with you uh i feel like we have a very few participants but we be good if you share the word with with uh, with other people as well uh the thing is uh, many people from like from uh, the us or from uh from australia or any western country for that matter uh they want to help people uh looking after kids or doing off uh, they want to help pay, they, they want to help uh, with orphanages who take who take care of uh, orphans or uh, abandoned kids which is good but at the same time they overlook church planting ministry so that's been uh, really i mean uh, that's one of the challenge we face you know many people they don't want to sow the seed into church planting ministry i think that is important too because uh, we go to villages as i shared before we go to villages where people have never shared the gospel never heard the gospel in their lifetime and then uh, we somehow find ways to uh, take the gospel to them we find different ways to reach out to people and it is really hard work i tell you it is really hard uh but many times you know this ministry this church planting ministry or uh, yeah building churches and things like that uh, this kind of ministry is overlooked uh which i feel is sometimes is very discouraging uh yeah it will be good if you pray that people uh, that god will uh, raise up supporters uh, to support church planting ministry as well which uh, which is very vital uh, in these last days i believe yes uh mm. yes we do uh 
it is true that uh, you know the uh, ministry it's uh, it takes different forms and yeah. it, it begins with first of all you know sharing the gospel or even the name mm. of Jesus Christ because yeah. that is something which most a lot of people here maybe they have heard it but they really don't know anything about who he yeah. is or you know yes. what he represents or what what the meaning yeah. of the gospel is so so you know well i do pray that you know when you go out there that uh, the work that mm. you do will be fruitful and i know a lot of those people that you are working with they're very very poor and uh, destitute yeah. right? hard for mm. people to even begin to imagine how bad it is and uh yeah. I, but they are beautiful people and i pray mm -hmm. that you know, god will uh keep them in this life mm -hmm. and then also grant them you know abundance interest yeah. to eternal life through jesus yes, all right that's mm -hmm. good well yes you know, brother one more thing. Yeah. sorry yeah, sorry go ahead go ahead keep talking what yeah, you have, uh, whatever you want to we, yeah we actually we live in chennai you, you've been here so you know about chennai um uh, we we uh, we minister to people in uh, villages uh near near chennai so surrounding chennai so a couple of years back you know we are uh, so much advanced chennai is a developing uh, city it's a metropolitan city as you know yes and uh, uh, there are so many uh, suburb and villages nearby chennai so we 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 go to these villages and share the gospel a couple of years back so we think chennai is so modernized and uh, it's it, it's developed so much yes it's true but at the same time there are so many people living nearby just like 30 or 40 kilometers away from chennai uh, this happened like a couple of years back. There are people, there are still people who have never heard the word Jesus. Can you believe it? This is unbelievable. So oh. uh, we think people uh, know who Jesus is, but there are still people who have never heard the name Jesus in their life, which is so, which is, uh, just can't believe it. So this is the state of, uh, I mean, Tamil Nadu here. So it's so, uh, I mean, it looks like a developing nation, but when it comes to the gospel, there are people, there are so many people never heard the gospel and never heard the name Jesus in their life. So, which is really uh, discouraging as well. <laughs> yeah, it's just true, you know, that that is uh, true of India as a whole. Like, you know, some parts of it are very, very modern and very first world almost. Um, but then there are other places which are like really you know, 500 years uh, from mm -hmm. what you might think that you had gone back in time 500 years. And yeah. uh, so it's uh, it's a very challenging environment to work in because uh, it's not, it can change mm. very, in, in a great deal, even like, you know, mm. as you said, traveling like 10, 15, 20 kilometers, and it can be totally yeah. different. And even language yeah. and communication can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, you know, I, I, uh, okay, that's good to hear, uh, Sebastian, and uh, yeah. I hope your family as well, and uh, every, you know, yeah. hopefully we'll also, on this trip here, I uh, mm. hope that, you know, I'll be able to, people also don't realize, you know, that India is a pretty big country, so it's not that mm -hmm. easy to uh, just, uh, you know, everything is not like to travel, and so, so, so although we are, you know, we, we are on the opposite coast. You are on the east and I'm on the west coast right now. So, you know, we'll have to hopefully at some point in time, God willing, you know, I'll be able to come out your way and uh, see you guys. Yeah. Which has been yes, bro. Years. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Anything else you wanted to share? Yeah. One more thing I would love to share with you all. Um, another thing we are working uh, right now is uh, we are we have been praying about this for almost 10 years now and we are starting it from tomorrow so we are doing a discipleship training training course from tomorrow uh, this is this is specially designed for pastors and leaders who have never been to a seminary or bible colleges so it's a residential bible school uh, it's a 6 months residential bible school they'll have a lecture phase of uh, 4 months uh, they'll uh, they'll just uh, sit and study the word uh, we have some teachers to come and teach uh, we have 10 students now uh, for Four months they'll be uh, they'll have teaching session lecture phase and the next two months uh, they'll have uh, outreach training we'll take them to villages and uh, we'll give them practical training so that's what we are doing now uh, the course is starting from tomorrow it's a six months course so please pray that will be a fruitful ministry and it will uh, help many pastors and leaders to be uh, disciples and 
equip them to make disciples in the future. Amen, brother. We will certainly pray for that and uh, yes. pray that God will, you know, bless them, these students and the teachers with much understanding mm. and knowledge of the word of God and uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ that uh, when they go to share, first of all, they will understand themselves. They'll build a yeah. relationship with him. And when they do that, then, uh, then you know, whatever they share, it'll come from the heart and it'll come from understanding. And that yes. has much more powerful impact than people, you know, who don't know and understand. So I pray yeah. for you that, you know, that uh, mm. that that'll be a fruitful place for them to learn and to grow and to be fed yes. real, mm. you know, strong meat there, not just the milk of the word of God. Yeah. Yes, bro. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Thanks for praying, brother. Yeah. No, oh, you're welcome. All right, brother. All right. Well, it's good to talk to you. Good to hear from you. And, uh, you know, uh, all right, let's see if somebody else here. Uh, I see Dana's here. Dana, you know, who's uh, had a very difficult time getting in. And Dana, like, you know, I know you entered a little bit late. So I just wanted to update you that uh, today, you know, I've decided that uh, there's been some problems here. Like, you know, like my camera isn't working and there's some electrical issues that are going on here where I am which is not uncommon in India, by the way, you know, like power, you know, uh, power cuts and all that are quite common. So uh, it's being fixed right now. So I thought instead of doing like a starting a new study, we'll just have a little bit of a fellowship. And I know you're, uh, you know, you've shared a little bit of your uh, testimony, let's say, and uh, you uh, uh, do some teaching yourself. So would you uh, take a couple of minutes and just, you know, tell everybody about, uh, well, your uh, your experiences uh, with the God, with Jesus, and what it is, you know, how it is that you go about to uh, share or the YouTube channel or something that you might have? Oh, where am I here? There I am. Hey, Brother Paul, everybody here. Um, I'm a fairly new Christian. I've, I've told a little bit of this before. Um, I didn't, he didn't call me back or that I noticed anyway, until about 2017 or so. I didn't do anything for a couple of years. And then I went and tried to find a church and God started placing people in, in my path. I spent less than a year in church, long enough to get baptized, really noticed some symbolism and stuff there. I didn't, uh, made me question things. So I got out of there. I started, uh, going to Bible studies here in the city, a couple of different ones. Um, I started watching a specific YouTuber who was a preacher. And then I started to have a lot of questions about the once saved, always saved. So I started actually reading my Bible for the very first time, start to finish in 2020. And I wasn't getting the answers. So I, I started reading and I started a channel on BitChute originally. Now I'm on YouTube and Rumble and Odyssey and Telegram. And it's called And It Came to Pass. I've been wiped out from YouTube twice since then. I'm back up right now. And uh, I started out just kind of reading stories that I was getting from uh, the leader of one of the Bible groups. And they were good stories and they were helping me get a little bit of understanding. But nobody there was questioning the once saved, always saved. The only person I knew in my life that was questioning that was my mother. So I would talk to her quite a bit about it. And then I thought, um, I need to just start putting it out there. So I started doing specific um not really teachings, but just kind of uh, throwing it out there, everything I could find within the Gospels about once saved, always saved, and how it didn't seem to be lining up. And I got a lot of flack on that, people telling me I couldn't take just that specific scripture. I had to go throughout the Bible. And I tried telling them that what I'm trying to do here is just show you what Jesus said, nobody else, because Jesus is the one who saves. And uh, the channel started growing a little bit. And since then, I've kind of tried to go a little deeper on everything. Uh, I did a Matthew series. I'm almost done. I'm going to jump into Hebrews, which I'm kind of excited about, but a little scared at the same time because there's a lot of information in there. And it was on that journey that I, I I found Brother Paul's teachings here, did a little bit of communication with him there, and now I'm here learning more and more all the time. I'm still watching Bible studies every single day, reading the Bible every single day. 
uh, eyesight's getting a little worse, so I had to get a little a bigger Bible <laughs> that mm -hmm. I can actually read now. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm glad to be here. I uh, I appreciate the flack that I get on the channels because it well at first it puts my back up. It actually makes me look deeper, study harder. So I appreciate the good and the bad. I mean, like they're both useful, right? And uh, that's kind of where I stand right now. I'm just uh, kind of trying to put the word out there and, and learn as much as I can. And I'm very appreciative that I'm part of this study, part of this fellowship. Yeah, thanks, Dana. Could you you want to put uh, the name of your channel or link or something in the chat here so that people can, uh, you know, uh, find it? And then what did you say it's called? And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Okay. That's good. That's wonderful. Okay. Well, you know, that's, uh, I'm very, very uh, blessed to see that, you know, like you said, you've been only studying it for uh, since 2020, which is relatively recent. And, uh, but that's the, that's the good thing about our God is that, you know, it doesn't, uh, uh person doesn't have to, uh, study for like you know decades and decades well there are people that have studying that have been reading the bible for decades and decades and decades they're probably low less than some people like yourself or like you know caroline here is also very uh new recently i believe from 2019 so you know you can come a long way in a very short period of time and uh that is again depends on your diligence and you know how you are that's what we've been studying in Peter, for example, everywhere to be diligent, to, you know, devote ourselves, to give ourselves wholly, as the Apostle Paul said, to to studying, you know. And then I believe the understanding and the revelation comes because Jesus did say, seek and you shall find. You know, he didn't say you may find or it's a chance you'll find. He said you shall find. And that is something which really, really, you know, like... Uh, yeah, what was I going to say? As I was doing this study on First uh, Corinthians 15, you know, I had, uh, it's like when you read the Bible and now, like, you know, in my case, like it's almost 40 years, like I'm starting to see like how plain, as you read in Proverbs, you know, it says, you know, it's plain to him who understands that, you know, God has plainly given us all the information that he needs us to know, Right. It's out there in the Bible. He said, okay, this is the plan. You know, this is what I've done. This is what is happening. And this is what's going to happen. All right, it's, it's there. Now all we got to do is study it, learn it, and believe it. And, you know, that I believe would make life a lot more. It would bring a lot of peace. It doesn't mean that, you know, there will not be like Sebastian was saying about all these uh challenges that come, you know, persecutions that arise, those things will also happen. But at least we will have like, you know, security that we understand. You know, faith, a faith is strengthened through understanding, right? Faith actually brings understanding. And then in turn, the understanding increases and strengthens our faith. So, like you are doing, and you know, I hope everybody else is doing, is that you know we all need to just spend more and more time just studying and praying, and you know, just essentially just thinking, and uh, like we studied in Peter about God, and you know, rolling that over and over and over and over in our mind, all just what we are studying, what we are reading. And it'll, uh, it, it'll, the understanding will grow and grow and grow. And uh, as people like yourself who, are, who have, uh, you know, I commend you that you have taken the time to actually start to teach. And that I've told everybody here many times that, you know, one way to learn more is to teach things. Because as you teach, you learn more. And that's always, that's I learn all the time when I'm, you know, planning to do some teaching or I'm doing some study, whatever, for the purposes of sharing it. Is like I say, oh man, how come I never saw that before? I've only studied read this for 40 years, you know, and I'm starting to see it now. And that's the thing about the Bible, though, is that there's not enough time. You know, like I mean, I'm trying to read through it, 
But like to even to just read the whole book, there's so much information in it that, you know, we can, in a whole lifetime of 24-7, all we did was study it. We would probably just, you know, get point zero 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 one percent of what's in it. And that is, well, anyways, it amazes me and it, it puts me in awe that, you know, there's so much has been given, yet there is so much more. The treasure that we have received is so great, and yet there is so much more that awaits us. I've uh, I've been thinking about this, and I've tried it a couple of times, but I haven't gotten it to where I like it, so I haven't put anything out yet. But I've watched a couple of people that I follow put out uh, like their story, their testimony, you know, a journey through their life and what brought them to where they are now. And I've, I've contemplated doing that. I've tried it a couple of times and I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that at some point and put it out there. Cause I feel that when you do that, people can kind of relate to it. Some yes. people here and there, at least a part of your story and it kind of helps them come out of their shell. Yes. Yeah. That's actually a good point. You know, yes. When we share our, like the word of our testimony, as it tells us, you know, and then I don't, I agree that, you know, testimony, what we, what it means in the Bible is not what exactly they have in these churches, you know, where a guy gets up, let me give you my testimony, you know, it's like, which is a completely different thing because it's been, it's been made into a religious ritual or something like that. But yes, but that is true. You know, when we share our, how the path that we have been on, you know, there are a lot of people that can relate to that or that are looking that, you know, that are contemplating the same type of path. And then when they see that somebody has already walked that, you know, have gone down that road, then they feel more confident and more comfortable stepping out there themselves. All right, brother, it's good to see you and to, good to talk to you. And, uh, you know, uh, yes, uh, I pray that, you know, you're, uh, you will, you know, gain more and more in understanding and knowledge and revelation. And that, uh, you know, your teachings, whatever you're doing, will be greatly blessed and, you know, will bear much fruit for uh, anybody and all those who, you know, follow your work. Okay, let's continue. All right, let's see here. Uh, I know Terry and Vinny are here. And, uh, you know, uh, I really want to also... Uh, you know, for people who don't uh, know, you know, I mean, th th Terry is, uh, Vinnie is Terry's son. And, you know, they have, he has some serious health problems. And uh, so, you know, I would like to uh, maybe for all of us to just, you know, pray for them and uh, that uh, it is a, a great burden and a challenge that they face in their life. And yet, despite that, you know, I see Vinny, you know, he's, uh, and, and Terry both, you know, they take time. I was just looking at your Facebook page there, Vinny, you know, you put in a lot of effort and work into it. And so, brother, God bless you. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, that uh, you will uh, continue to be blessed with knowledge and wisdom and revelation, and that you will be able to continue to share it uh, for a long time. Anyways, how are you guys doing? Thank you for that, Paul. Uh I uh, really appreciate that. I um, I I think I've told you in the past. I keep trying to muster up like the courage to do a little teaching. I, I actually have started. I have a friend who has been inquiring about stuff, and we started reading the Bible together and talking about things. And yesterday, actually, after our uh, our meeting yesterday morning, it was really helpful for my conversation with him. He talked. He was asking me a lot of questions similar to what we talked about yesterday, and we just were. I was just talking to him about being mindful all the time of God and making sure that he takes the time to know that the rest of the world is just trying to take his time away from God and make sure he gives time to God. And he really understood that. And just like Dana said, and I, Dana, I appreciate everything you said also. It's uh, very, very thankful to be a part of this ball. I learned a lot and it's, it's helped me be able to share a lot on Facebook. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. You know, like it's, uh, uh, and that's, you know, it's, it's sometimes we think that, you know, we have to start uh, writing a book like Isaiah or something, you know, with real deep uh, teachings and all that, you know, but it doesn't like, and it could be like just a few sentences. It could be a paragraph. It could be just a spoken word for five minutes. It doesn't matter. You know, it's like, but it is something that we ourselves have come to 
study that we have studied and that we have come to understand, you know, and then what we what is in us, it will come out. You know, God will bring it out of us because it has already been placed inside of us. And that's what uh, will help. You know, we don't know who is going to help. And like, you know, when I post my videos or whatever, you know, I have no idea. I know that, you know, we have this small group here that we meet uh, every weekend and, uh, you know, that we fellowship together. But in the wider world, what's like eight or ten people, really? You know, like I don't even know what percentage of the world population that is probably like 0.000001 percent or something like that okay so it, it's not a great big number uh but you know yet there are like i also understand that you know youtube sends these stats out every month you know you had so many views and you had you know so many subscribers and this and that and you know i usually don't look at it but like you know this past week or something, I, I, I happened to glance at it. And it said, you know, watch minutes that your videos were watched for. And it was like, you know, something like, I don't know, 120,000 or some minutes that, you know, that that the, whatever videos they are, that somebody was watching out there. And, I, and it really shocked me. I go, wow. You know, I mean, so I don't know who's out there, who's listening, who's under, who's who's gaining what from it. I hope you know, that there are many more people that are other than just this group. And, uh, but, you know, what, how God will use us and whom he will send to our, you know, information, we have no idea. So we should just uh, not worry about whether there's going to be, you know, a whole lot of class students in our classroom or not. We just need to do it because, you know, as the Apostle Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. It's just something, you know, we love and we love to do it. And we don't do it for any money or any reward or any, like I said, you know, or to build a big church or a big following or whatever. We just do it because we love God's word. Amen. Amen. I, I was just speaking with my mother the other day, like you said, about such a small percentage. I remember... Uh, in the past, we we joked about the one percent, and you saying how we're the true one percent. And throughout my life, I've my condition has made me be a as a very rare condition. I don't see anybody else with it ever. And being a part of this group feels a whole lot more unique than that. I just wanted to share that. Oh, thank you, Vinnie. I really that really is wonderful, you know, and. Uh... Uh, you know what I mean? Personally, I think, you know what, like we just like ordinary folks. And uh, yet you're right. We are not. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are like, you know, how great a value it is. You know, Jesus said that he endured the cross. In Hebrew, tells us endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. And, you know, we are that joy. And in this world, we certainly don't think of ourselves in those terms, but for God, you know, our value that he has placed upon us is, uh, is truly is incalculable. And because it's the value of God, because in the end, God says, oh, God will be all in all. So like, you know, we have the same value as God. Now that's something which, you know, hardly anybody I've never heard anybody teach that, and that is something which I just, the way I phrased it right now, I don't think I myself have ever, you know, spoken it in those terms, but that is the truth. That is how valuable you are, and everybody here is, and uh, all those who love the Lord, our God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, everybody, for the prayers. Okay, well... All right, let's continue. Who else, uh, you know? Hi, Paul. It's Terry. Terry, please go ahead. I just want to thank you again for all that you do and for everyone for sharing. And even though I've known Christ for 33 years, the last five or six years have really been so unique studying with you. Um, not to say that I didn't study in the past, and it got me through with all the struggles that we faced. But it's just so different now. 
And as things keep getting harder and harder with this condition, I need every bit that we have. And the studying is just so much more of a benefit. And I've learned so much from you. I just want to say thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Terry. I appreciate it. And again, you know, like the Apostle Paul said, you know, what is it that you have that you have not received? You know, and honestly, like I personally think of myself, you know, like people think that I'm such a probably such a, the greatest student ever or something like that. You know, that is absolutely not true. It is, uh, you know, yes, I do study, no doubt, but I'm sure there's people that study more than me and, uh, you know, that are more diligent than I am. But it is, again, speaks to the mercy and the calling and the election of God. You know, he has, uh, like he chose Moses and he said, okay, this is what you have to do. And, you know, so I think, you know, like a person like myself, you know, he just gives me understanding because, you know, Jesus said to his disciples, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And, you know, a lot of these things, you know, like which uh, which uh, I know and understand, it is again, like, you know, it is simply a gift from God. That's all it is. And I'm so grateful and thankful for it. I really appreciate it. And now as I get older, I value it more and more, you know, that uh, this, because I know that what a great treasure it is that I have been given and blessed with, and that I'm able to share with you guys and with, uh, you know, uh, some more people out there, whoever watches my shows and my videos. And, you know, hopefully they too feel the same way as you do that, you know, you have in this time as your difficulty is getting in this world is uh, is becoming harder things are getting harder god has also you know brought you into this fellowship and into like you know more understanding so that you know at least uh, we don't uh, become better like a lot of people do and start blaming god but we understand that you know in this life yes uh, trouble and affliction and tribulation they are actually what we should expect and not expect life always to be a bed of roses, you know, and just, uh, uh, you know, sleeping on uh, feather beds and having no problems ever. That is not what the Bible teaches. Agreed. Amen. All right. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Vinny. It's a Thank pleasure. You speaking with you guys and hearing from you guys. Caroline, I see you are on here as well. Are you uh, uh, willing to uh, share something with us? Yes, hello, everybody. Um, uh, yeah, um, first of all, many thanks, um, Dana, for your testimony. It's just wonderful to hear how you experience life and especially the... Uh, that you came to God, um, um, it's more to speak that God pulled you in Jesus Christ, and it, it's just uh, beautiful. I will uh, watch out and look to your channel. I'm curious. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah, nothing new. We spoke yesterday, Paul. It's uh, yeah. It is. Um, I'm just glad uh, I'm a. I'm part and a member of this fellowship. I'm uh, very grateful and thankful to the Lord that. God and both uh, God and Jesus do me to our group and to that I have the opportunity and the possibility to um, can study with you and to to um, have my Bible and that I woke up basically in uh, 2019 and like Dana experienced it happened to me I read the whole Bible uh, for the first time. I finished it, uh, reading it for the first time in 2019 in November, and then I re-repeated it from the, the beginning of the Old Testament to the end of the Book of Revelation. And since then, I take some um, um, Bible books. For example, today I was reading the uh, Lamentations of Jeremiah and after that, um, First Corinthians, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and. Uh, that is my life, actually, and I'm so glad and very thankful that I um, that, that, that gives me to to put all my eyes to to God and not so much um, anymore to the world, you know, because the world is 
especially maybe when living in a great and big city, um, there are so many distractions and uh, it is, um, I went many ways down the road, you know, to can find the truth. And finally it came at, uh, it is just a gift from God and I very much uh, valued it. And uh, yeah, Paul, many things again, what can I say? I'm just so glad that I have found First of all, your channel, and then your, um, that we got friends, and all of you. I'm very thankful um, for all of you. And Winnie and Terry, you are so brave, the both of you. And um, yeah, and, um, and other than that, you know, summer came. I, I'm glad I, I, I'm going out sometimes. I go out to the lakes, have a swim, and something like that. That is much better than, of course, uh, than um, having winter all the time. So I appreciate God's wonderful and beautiful nature. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. And uh, Brother Sebastian, many greetings to you also. And God bless you abundantly for all you do for the Lord and for the beautiful people and children over there at your place. And um, so God bless you all. And uh, I pass it to someone else. Thanks. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, yeah, wonderful that, uh, you know, uh, that again, I would uh, commend you that, uh, you know, that uh, I, I, I wish there are like a lot more people like you and Dana, like who, uh, who, who, who come to God and God places such a, you know, uh, desire in their heart to study and to know that, you know, you actually, like you said, you read the Bible cover to cover. And sadly, most people, you know, if you go to like today is Sunday and there's be like millions and millions and millions of people that are going to go to church all over the world. And I would say that, you know, again, like we were talking about percentages, you know, probably like more than 90% of them have never actually read the Bible. And that is so such a tragedy because they have no idea what a treasure it is that's sitting on a shelf in their home and uh, that it is the most valuable thing they have. And yet, uh, you know, people just don't take the time to to read it and then to study it. So I'm, I'm very happy for people like you. And I wish, you know, there will be a lot more that will just uh, become very, very diligent students and then become teachers. And uh, the more we have, the more that are in this world, you know, the more, uh, well, it's always better to have the knowledge and understanding of God than it is to all the other stuff that, uh, that this world sends our way. There's no shortage of information, but for the most part, it is all evil and corrupt information. So thank you. Yeah, it is, you know, I read uh, during almost all my life, My I'm now um, 48, and I read all this big uh, so-called classical literature, uh, literature um, like Thomas Mann, Dostoevsky, and everything else, you know, and never and never got to a point where the, a solution could be. And then, and then I was wondering, um, and then they, of course, they make advertising for the big ball and for the... Uh, for the um, <coughs> um, um, Big Bang, and but it is hidden, very hidden, and yes. um, it is uh, yeah. And I spent many many years write, reading many books, and so um, but then one day uh, God uh, woke me up, um, and uh, yeah, and then it's always a matter of um, you know suffering, suffering in this world. I suffered a great deal, like I'm sure all of us. And uh, then it is a decision of God Himself um, as to whom, as to who he, he will pull, you know, and uh, as to um, on what person He would like to have mercy. And therefore, um, therefore, I just, I, uh, it is just a blessing, you know. And uh, so I was always in my life, throughout my life, looking for the truth. And I um, have never been an atheist or so, but I have not. I, I knew Jesus and I knew him not. It is it's quite interesting in a way because I was suffering a little bit when uh, the so-called Easter came um, along each year. And then I was, was, how could people murder him? You know, and I was so, so sad and, you know, I felt a little bit miserable, but I could not grasp 
Jesus Christ. And and then the devil, of course, um, um, he he does everything to um, <clears throat> puts a kind of veil um, on the um, of the on the minds of most people. So he did with me that I didn't come to the good and best idea to just take the Bible in my hand, you know, because the Bible, it is in people's minds, especially in the minds of the Western uh, um, people, um, countries, people, but then they, take, they don't take it in their hands. And then I don't know as to why, because maybe it is because they think that is, there is a danger. They um, don't understand the Bible anyways. Or it is a little bit of work. It is more work than um, than reading a um, sport magazine, you know. It is the mirror in our face, and that's why people, including myself, until 2019, it is a, um, a hint. Or uh, how can I, um, sorry, express myself? Um, it work which is, um, doesn't feel comfortable, let's put it that way. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes, okay. You're right. I apologize for, for my English. I sometimes still um, am looking for the right words in my mind, but uh, I, I hope you, you could understand me. Yes. Yes, we understood you fine. You, you, your English is actually, you know, I would say it's very good. So uh, I don't think anybody in this group has any problem understanding you. So thank you for sharing, Caroline. And, uh, you know, I uh, hope you continue to be blessed with the, uh, the desire to keep on studying and understanding and, uh, you know, sharing and talking about uh, the only subject that is worth talking about it, which is the knowledge of God and of our Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there's nothing else that's worth knowing or understanding. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, Brother Paul, man, I love you. My name is Sylvester. I've emailed you a number of times. I've been listening to you, brother, and your and, and uh, my brothers and sisters for the last uh, long. You've been doing the Zoom, um, brother. Um, I just appreciate you standing up for Jesus Christ. Oh, thank, um, you. thank you. Sorry, I, I missed your name. What was your name again? My name is Sylvester Tapley. I'm in I'm in Springfield, Illinois. I'm about two hundred oh, miles from yes, okay, Chicago. Now, um, I recognize. Yeah. Hi, Sylvester. It's uh, a yeah. well, yeah. uh, welcome and it's a wonderful having you here. Please continue. This, this is my first time speaking um, with, with you guys. I have always listened. I'm somewhat shy over over the phone or something like that. But in person, I'm just like um, I, I, I try to align. I just I'm just like you. I'm I'm bold for Christ. Nobody wants to listen to me, brother. Nobody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry right now. I'm getting emotional because I'm getting a chance to hear my, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm sorry. Um, but, um, brother, um, we're so, our society is so lost. Um, they, this, the false, um, the false churches that they have out here and, Everyone I speak to, my family members, nobody calls me. Nobody talks to me. No, uh, people that meet me, they listen to me for about a month, and they think that 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 they're gonna um, eventually, with their agenda, is gonna overrun Jesus Christ's agenda that I speak. But I keep coming. Jesus keep giving me the strength to come. The scripture in Acts that says, "In Him we live and move and have our being." Without him, we are nothing. Jesus Christ is everything in our lives. And I just want to keep it short. I just want to let you and the congregation, the, the Zoom congregation, know that I really believe that you, everyone is on point on what they speak, on what I hear you guys speak in line with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a standard. I'm going to cut it off there. I can go on for years, but I'm not. Well, you know, thank you, brother. It's uh, well, welcome to our uh, fellowship, and uh, you are more than welcome to, uh, you know, usually, uh, even if I do a teaching and have some time afterwards uh, or in the beginning for anybody to share and to talk. So, so, so you feel free to talk whenever you want to when you're on here. I, um, brother, I will email you more. It's not that you never communicated through your 
through my uh, email. Um, but I know that you're busy and um, I'm just basically all I'm saying, I'm in line with every video that you have produced through Jesus Christ. Um, I'm told I'm not against anything that you say. Um, the Lord have to show me wrong. I'm not here to point out wrong on anybody that is listening to the message right now, because I believe you guys are all on one accord when it comes to the Bible, to Jesus Christ. I have nothing against anything that you guys say. Um, I, when, when we all, when I, when I do hear do you, when I listen to you guys and then somebody is going awry and even some people that you might not agree with, I came up in Pentecostal just like you did, brother. I've been a Baptist, Presbyterian. I haven't, I haven't experienced a third of what you have, but that, that I, you have experienced, that I have experienced, I, I agree with you 100%. All right. Thank you, Sylvester. You know, it's uh, the only way that you or anybody else can determine that we are uh, on point and we are, uh, you know, uh, sharing the same spirit is by studying the information that is presented and comparing it to the Word of God. So obviously, you know, you take the time to study for yourself, because if you didn't know the Word of God, you, nobody, you know, people that don't know it, I don't know how they decide that a preacher is right or wrong because they have nothing to well, compare the teaching to. Yes, brother, when 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 any, you and anyone else speaks, that's how I can, now I can respond by listening to you. Um, now, the thing is, is that everyone that I tell about you and your meeting and the people that speak with you about Jesus Christ, I tell them, you have to know the word of God to listen to him. Because if you don't know the word of God and listen to you, Paul, and, you, and other, the rest of my brothers and sisters that speak with you, all they're going to say is gibberish. I, I met you through your a YouTube video. Um, I was on my elliptical one day at home, and I, uh, I was listening to a video of someone else, and I didn't... Um, it goes off into another one. If you don't catch a YouTube video and go on to the next, to the same person that you're listening to, the next person will come up. You came on. And I'm sitting there and I want that ellipt elliptical and I'm saying, wait a minute. I have sit in these congregations and I never heard anybody say this, but what happens is that I have thought what I heard you say. And I, I never heard anyone bold enough to say it in a congregation because when you say Things that you say through the word of God, through Jesus Christ, you get the, 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 the pastor, the next time you got, first of all, they look at you funny. And then the next time you come to the congregation, you get the cold shoulder and that pastor turns the whole congregation against you. Yes, you're right. And uh, you know what? That's why, like, my, my caution has always been to everybody that, you know, hey, you got to test your pastor first and above anybody else. You know, if you don't test his teaching against the word of God, you are most likely being deceived. And that's that's the problem. You know, people don't study when they've when they've been commanded to do that. So if they don't keep the command, then, you know, they are not going to learn anything. So I'm grateful and thankful for this small group that we have that, you know, people who have the heart, they have the desire, they have the passion like you seem to do, to, you know, study and to learn. And then you will, you learn and you will grow. And God will bring, you know, like uh, the people, like Dana was saying, you know, that he kept finding different, uh, you know, people to lead him into deeper understanding. And that's how he ended up at my channel. And, uh, you know, I wish there were like another million teachers better than myself out there, but sadly, you know, I haven't found any. No, go Brother, ahead. guess what? Not that. See, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and the Word of God is my past. Now, the thing is, is that the Paul in the New Testament, I take you in our generation, I take you as our Paul. Okay. I'm not trying to lift you well, up. Jesus that, Christ is a standard. That, that's a great honor, my brother. You know that. I mean, you know, I, I, 
I'm humbled to hear you say that. I mean, I hardly ever think that I'm I, even like a fan of what that no, man is. I mean that. But, uh, I mean that. I mean that. I never heard. I, I like, like other people have said to you. I heard them say to you. I never heard anyone speak to the degree that you do. You to continue, even to continue on listening to you, you have to go in depth in the Bible. The person himself listening to you. You have to go in depth. Um, the first time that I heard you, like I said, it was one segment. And then I didn't know how to use your channel. You have to go in on the teacher of the word. And then you have to press um, the teacher of the word. And then it show a playlist. And then I was able to go in and open up the playlist. And then it showed me the first, second, and third. Um, and it, it was about the um, the gold, the silver, and the bronze, and the iron age. That's That's, that's what you caught my attention with. Yeah, yes. you know, like I the, love you. Right, thank you. The history in the Bible is, you know, when we history is a great subject, especially the history of creation. If if what actually happened, or you know, what's what we are taught in the Bible is 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 taught to the people, but you know what they get shared with people, what they teach people is something completely fabricated, and it's boring. You know, but uh, but God's God's or whether it's history or you know any other topic, His plans, His purposes, the doctrine, you know, the topic of the image of God. You know, it's like to me, it's like more interesting than any anything else in this world. I could talk about it, and I could read about it, and I could study about it every moment of my life. Oh uh, yes, because you cannot exhaust God; He's limitless. That's the reason why. And until we meet him, even when we meet him in, in spirit, um, I don't believe, brother, through, um, through you, through your teaching, I don't believe in any of the holidays. I believe in a holy day. Every day is holy. Right. Every day is a holy day in Jesus Christ. I'm a rich and done shaped in iniquity and sin. I'm a fallible human being. I tell people all the time, that I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm only through righteous. I'm righteous through Jesus Christ on what He did for us when He presented us before His Father. But I'm a fallible human being. But I let Him know that the God that I serve is righteous. The God that I serve is perfect. So when the enemy comes, He's accused of the brother. So when He comes to you with that garbage, and me and you know that me and you have erred in our Lord and our Savior and stuff like that. Get down on your knees, ask the Lord for, for sincere forgiveness, and get back up and keep on being that Christian soldier. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it's uh, you, you, you have a, uh, we can tell that you have a heart and a passion, and, uh, you know, that's wonderful. And I also pray that, you know, you, God will keep on opening up all of us up with our, in our minds, in our hearts, you know, to give us to show himself, to reveal himself more and more to us. You know, when I was studying First yeah. Corinthians 15 today, I, I, Paul gives the example of all the people that saw Jesus after his resurrection. There were like, you know, more than 500 witnesses that he said that actually saw Jesus alive after his resurrection. And, you know, when I was thinking about it and I said, you know what? I myself have seen Jesus, okay? Not like these yes. apostles and these disciples saw him, okay? But I have seen his heart. God has revealed that, yes. right? And I believe that. Brother. I know him just as well, I think, as, you know, the apostles or some of the, you know, disciples. Maybe not as well, but I mean, you know, pretty well. And that's without ever leaving. Sorry, go ahead. For you to speak the way you do, to teach the way you teach, you have to know him. He has to be the one revealing it to you. First of all, what I have to say here, brother, is that I don't know how many years ago from where we are right now to when Jesus died on the cross, when his blood was spilled for us to put our sins into remission. I can't really tell you how long ago it was. I heard different people say stuff. But what happens is that when everybody else dies, okay, there's for one thing, for, 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 for Jesus to state the things that he said so far as being the son of God, being righteous with um, the first fruit of God, um, being um, 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 equal with God, 
nobody else else has made Buddha, Muhammad, nobody else has staked those claims. He uh, Either he's a lunatic or it has to be true. Now, the next thing is everybody that dies, their names are forgotten throughout time. They, who is this? Who is that? Jesus, if Jesus is not real, why is when you bring Jesus' name up, why is there such a great ruckus? Why people turn against you? Yes, you're absolutely it's not right. It's a name that still, it's, it's, you know, either or. Either it's going to bless you or it's going to be something that is going to rub you the wrong way. Like, you know, it's like the world, people don't realize like how subtly, how powerful it is that the devil does not let go of any opportunity to denigrate it and to, you know, abuse it. Like every movie, like if I ever happen to catch like some kind of show or movie or something, which I don't very often, in almost all of this, every single one of them, they will be taking God's name in vain. And then, you know, that really puts me off. And I want to just, you know, never watch anything, any crap, which I don't anyways, but uh, it's it's all there. And that's because there is yeah. truth in it. It is the real, it is the name that is above all names. And uh, that says Satan works day and night to try and people to turn people away from him. That's it. That's all. I, I agree. I yeah. agree with you, brother. What happens is that Satan is the prince of the air. So in any airways, radio, television, what have you, computers, what, what we have to do through Jesus Christ. I heard you say a number of times that love, uh, uh, um, evil is just as great as is, is 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 love or however um i knew what i knew what you were saying so the thing is it all depends when you come to that fork in the road it all depends on who you lean towards mm. that's who's going to be the dominant one in your soul in your spirit i have two spirits inside of me paul said it's like two dogs fighting the thing is is that which one do you obey and by you making that statement about this television and movies and stuff like that. And when you see something that rubs you a wrong way because they use the Lord's name in vain, and a lot of people don't know we're using the words Lord and the Lord's name in vain. When you use the words the Lord's name in vain, it's using Jesus Christ's name to benefit you instead of God. Or to, yeah. cause, or to you know, use it in a derogatory way, which happens all the time. Correct. Right? Yes. Yes, you're correct. And so the thing is, is that brother is the simplicity of God. And I had an associate that I used to work with. He was from Pakistan. His name was Arshad. I think he was, at this time, I think he's around 42. He had a uh, two master's degree and a doctorate and working on his second doctorate. Now, he was not a Christian. He was a Sunni Muslim. But him and I got along because we respected each other, meaning we just, we didn't ha do harm to each other. Um, we didn't talk down on each other, stuff like that. I just said what I believed, and he said what he believed. But here's what he did say. He said, here in the United States, they teach people wrong. And now, he was talking about the educational point of view. If you take that in, that's the physical, same way with the spiritual. And I didn't, I, I didn't understand what he was saying at first. What happens is that you have to have money to get a proper education in the United States. They make, they close doors on you when you don't reach the criteria of what to be able to pay them to give you what you need to succeed in this society. Same way with the spiritual aspect of things. They, first of all, they don't know. And the second thing is, is that I was reading in the book of Judges how uh, Midian, uh, I think it was Midian's son, uh, I, I forgot his name because um, I wasn't thinking about this son, Abimelech, I believe, when he ordained himself. A uh, mm -hmm. man ordains himself um, um, God is the only one that ordains. Right. You are ordained. You know, so I'm a joint heir with Christ. I'm the true Jew. You're the true Jew. Yes. When we believe in Jesus Christ as a fool of fullest, when we believe that he rose from the dead, when we believe that um, he uh, is seated on the right hand of God and all power has been given over to him, the simplicity of God, we're joint heirs with Christ. We're part of the royal priesthood. His blood is running through my veins. I'm a true Jew. I'm, a, I'm African American. But I'm a true Jew. Yes. Thank you. But I give Jesus. I give honor. I give honor to God. I give, brother. You don't know how 
wonderful it is. Um, I don't glorify man. I respect me. I, res- I, I love God. I reverence God. I, I'm learning to love God more. And the more that you, now, the thing is, you're my brother and anybody else that I come up next to, they're my neighbor. If they don't have Jesus, they're my neighbor. But if they have Jesus, they accept Jesus Christ, their own personal Savior, they're my brother. Then the thing is, is, for me to show God that I love God, I have to love that individual, you know. So that's, you know, so, and, and when you start, when you start teaching me um, that God is love, you know, and in him is no darkness, and the devil portrays to be the angel of light, you know. So it's, it's so simple. The only thing that makes it hard is me. I'm the only one that makes it hard. Yes. Nobody else does. Nobody else can make it hard for me. It's only me. If I plead to God, he's going to plead to me. If I abide in him, he's going to abide in me. It's me that makes it hard, not nobody else. Not the president, not the gang member, not the um, um, the, the police system, not money. Me, I, Sylvester, is the one that's going to make it hard to not have a relationship with God and end up in the wrong place in the end. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 I thank God for God, because without his mercy and his, you know, calling his election, yeah, we would all be the same as all the other people out there and, uh, you know, lost and blinded and uh, living lives without meaning and purpose. So, you know, we give thanks to our Heavenly Father and to our Lord Jesus Christ for the mercy they've had on us. And, you know, in giving us this knowledge and understanding that, you know, we know who we are. We know where we came from. We know, you know, where we are going to be going. And uh, we know what we have to do in this life to uh, to make sure that we obtain the promise of salvation. So, you know, everything like, you know, and, and Peter has said when we were doing the study that, you know, the God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things that pertain to life and all God. things, right? So yes, sir. He has left nothing out, so I have no excuse. Nothing, right? I have. Uh, so that that is, you know, so those blessings. When we really begin to think about it, it's like, you know, I, I mean, sometimes I just want to just sit there and with my mouth hanging open, and I don't have the words anymore because God's done it all. Yes, you're at all. You're at all. And the thing is, is that, brother, you're 100% correct. I just I just love the way God is using you and to make things so simple. Paul, please don't never give up. Paul, you got people that you got people that count on you, man. And, I, I'm not, and, and guess what? Like I said, I've been to these fake congregations and I don't count on man for nothing. But after hearing you speak on Jesus Christ, Please don't never, don't never go the other way, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Keep praying for me, you know. And uh, yes, you know, yes. we really have to be, uh, uh, like I said, who am I, right? It's like David said that, right? Lord, who am I or my yes. family that you chose me? And that's the way it is, you know. Yes. Like God, like, how did he do it? Did he take like darts and, you know, threw them? at names or something, you say, okay, that's the problem. I don't know what process he uses, but, you know, he called me, chose me, chose you, you know, and to give us this understanding. And, you know, all we can do in in return now that we are maturing, all we can do is go on our knees and give him thanks. Because we know I didn't do anything to deserve this. No. But the only thing I'm trying to do is to encourage you. We, I, I think you. Um, I know God, everything is God. Um, nothing, everything, um, the, the scriptures, everything was made for him and by him and for his divine purpose. Right. And if he, and, and, and the way he, um, elected you, I'm just glad it happened. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thank really you. I'm glad. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus is right. Well, on that note, yeah. Brother Sylvester, it's been uh, wonderful, you know, hearing from you. And I hope uh, that, you know, you will join us uh, more regularly and share your yeah, understanding. It will be wonderful to hear from people who have that sort of passion and uh, that fire, you know, that 
And God is, a, like you said, he's a consuming fire. Either he's going to consume us as adversaries or he's going to consume us while we're in this life and, uh, you know, burn everything that is evil up in us and to replace it with himself. And I hope that, you know, he, yeah. and that that's that fire, yeah. something I, I hope and pray that it burns hotter and hotter in us so that, you know, we diminish faster and faster and he increases in all of us faster and faster. Yes. Uh, lo I love you and everybody that's on the line with you. And I, um, I, I just, I just, man, you just don't know how excited I am to hear you in person so far as us to communicate back and forth. And the next time, um, if, the, if this is the Lord's will, that I'll be on Zoom more often. The Bible says don't make a vow that you can't keep. So the thing is, is that I would like to be on Zoom if it's God's will. And I want to hear the other people speak so I can feed off of them iron sharpens iron. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, we all pray that, uh, yeah, by God's mercy, his will and his grace, we'll uh, continue to with, uh, keep on with these fellowships. Uh, for uh, I know at some point in time, we are going to hit some roadblocks and, you know, this, this technology and everything may not always be available. But as long as it is, you know, we will keep studying and we will keep worshiping and we will keep praising and thanking God. And I thank God for all of you, and I thank God for you, Sylvester. It's been a wonderful hearing from you. And I noticed that uh, Nathan's joined us a little bit late. Nate, you know, today we are just uh, not, didn't have any teaching, just did a little fellowship. So if you have to say something uh, before I wrap this up, please go ahead. Thank you, Paul, for your heart coming out, going out to me. Sylvester, God bless you. Um, thank you, sir. You know, I would say actually, I would say God has blessed me to put me through metaphorical hell on earth. Um, I remember watch. I I worked in the movie industry for twenty years, and I watched a lot of movies. And I'd watch movies like, uh, you know, about like people in war or people in a impoverished nation, or you know, Uganda Hotel Uganda, or you know, all these movies and. I feel like uh, I realize everybody that had gone through something like when Paul's gone through things, Paul's been through troubles. He's been imprisoned and, 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 and uh, Timothy. And I realized that when they're all different, but when you go through hardship, you start being able to understand them more. And uh, I think I understand why I, I, I heard it from um, Carolina. Uh, why she thinks she moved to India, but I don't know if she was saying what she thinks she, why you moved or, or what you said, but you're bored with it. You're bored with Canada. Is that the reason? Oh, are you talking to me? No, no. I mean, I'm not. Yes, I'm talking it. To you. No, no, I, I, okay. I I'm uh, I, you know, Wes, in a, in a manner of speaking, you're right. That, uh, I, you know, maybe that would be a one way of putting it, but, uh, I'm in India because I've had this opportunity where I can come and uh, spend time here at little or no cost. And uh, yeah. also, you know, I have free time. Basically, yeah. you know, I don't have a job. I don't have all the other responsibilities that I have back in Canada. So here I'm, I'm free to, you know, study, to make more videos, to do more, you know, to read the Bible more. So, you know, like I'm blessed in that respect. Yes. That, that's the reason why I'm here. And, uh, you know, I'll be probably be spending a fair bit of time here. As oh, long as I, this, this uh, you know, uh, place to live and to stay. And uh, and so that, that's why I'm here. I'm um, sorry. Forgive uh, me, Sebastian, brother. You wanted to say something? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. Paul, um, anybody else? I'm not saying that Paul is not in. Paul is more important than anybody else. He's just one that the site and I, you know, I heard from first, and I hear the rest of you guys. And Paul um, and, and the rest are the saints on the phone. I was wondering, is any kind of would you had you ever considered writing a book? And like, I would donate money to you. And I know you always said that you don't want freely given. Um, God freely gave you, so you give freely. But is there any way that we could, I could support you? Or if you ever consider writing a book, I'll send you money. Uh, Sylvester, you know, yes, uh, I would uh, 
there is a lot of knowledge that you know that I have compiled. Like our mind itself is like a hard drive, you know. So yes, I would like to collate it and to put it together in some sort of order, especially in regards to, for example, the history of creation. And that is something which I have desired to do. And uh, possibly now I'm at my stage in my life where, uh, you know, my, uh, well, my earthly responsibilities are, are diminished a great deal. So, you know, God willing, I will have time to do that. Now, at this present time, you know, it's not about the money. So it's okay. And, you know, maybe in the future, okay, if, you know, some reason I I uh, need uh, support or whatever, yeah, I'll welcome it at that time. But at this time, it's not about the money. It's more about the time. So, you know, yes, given that uh, factor, uh, yeah, I might, uh, I have considered in the past, I have even done some writing in that regards. But, uh, yeah, I, w- I would definitely you know, hopefully not just think about doing it, but uh, God willing, will actually, you know, complete it and finish it uh, in some time in the future. Yes, and the reason I spoke of that, the Bible says be uh, wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. If, 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 if just like the, the devil putting those fake books and the fake Bibles in these congregations, I believe through you, so far as Jesus Christ giving it to you, the 1611, is that what I... That, that is what I read. Um, so what I'm saying is that the thing is, is that a lot of people are going to uh, run the other direction when they see that this certain book has got the name of Bible on it. But what happens is that you can disguise the book and you don't have to put a certain name on it. But when they start reading it, the the, the spirit are automatically drawn through the positivity of the, the teaching of Jesus Christ engaged. Mm, yes. They'll be, they'll be curious, curious about the book but they, they don't know what they're getting ready to be hit, you know, because they don't have Bible written on front of it. Right. Uh, you know what? But in, in the end, uh, Jesus said, you know, no man can come to the Father, to me, except the Father draw him. So, you know, when, I mean, those are the kind of things sometimes I wonder, you know, when we are always trying to devise schemes, you know, how to, you know, attract people or how to make the word more attractive for them or to, you know, make it more simpler or understandable for them, you know, but in the end, it is God who, uh, who, you know, who doesn't care, you know, if the word Bible yeah. is written on it or not, like, you know, he wants to bring somebody, he'll bring them like Paul, you know, who was such a, yes, yes, yes. so he will. So, you know, that thing, I don't yeah. think it's that big and big uh, and that important is, you know, how it's, okay. and it, it's just like, you know, yes, but I mean, as far as I am, uh, the the book idea, like, you know, especially writing about the history of creation, that is something I definitely yeah. would like to do, you know, present the ages and everything in an orderly manner. And, uh, and yeah, and even like in a video format, I talked to Nathan about it too, because he's in the movie industry, you know, and I had uh, oh. one time, one time uh, discussed it with him to, you know, maybe have it in some sort of, like my videos, you know, put them in a more, uh, you know, more, uh, more visually uh, attractive format, perhaps, you know, so that uh, because I mean I don't know all the different. God said to do know. everything, and I right. think the scriptures God says do everything in excellence. So you want to present your work in excellence. Let's think it's simple, a, a godly way of saying what you're trying to say, right? Because you can yeah. say professional. But yeah. You know, Worldly. It's like, you know, when you look at, look at uh, I mean, uh, in my past, uh, I've had, I had a lot of uh, interest in like, you know, some science fiction and fantasy fiction and things like that. So I, I've studied a lot, watched a lot of movies and stuff like that. And now I know, you know, that God has used a lot of the information that I had somehow, you know, stored in my mind somewhere to, uh, and he has taught me a great deal from it. So, I mean, it was not exactly a waste of time when I think about it now. But, you know, when you think about movies like The Lord of the Rings or something like that, which are historical in a certain way, there is some truth in them. And, uh, you know, most people don't understand, you know, what uh, what they are really revealing. So, you know, I was thinking, you know, if, if somebody could take 
like the real history of creation, like the story you know I share about, you know, uh, Lucifer, the, the Satan, the serpent, dragon, etc. And, you know, presented like in one of those movie formats or something, it would be probably the most interesting movie ever made in the history of this world. Um, yes, I, I agree with you. I was speaking to uh, two brothers. They, they, uh, I went to visit them at their house, and I told them about the anointed cherub, um, Lucifer, and Satan. And then what happens is that the, the, uh, in other teachings, the buggy is being put before the horse. That's why people are being confused. But the way that the Lord revealed it to you through the, through the word of God, it's simple to believe and the Lord opens up people's minds um, and their hearts to accept it. And a guy, I, I know a guy, he's very prideful. He don't count on anyone. But when I told him that, he told me thank him. But in all reality, it was Jesus Christ um, working through you and then me listening to you and then spreading what you said. Yeah. You know, so um, um, people, what happens to our society is just caught, our, it's taught backwards. That's why come they can't grasp they can't grasp what you're saying because when you go to these congregations, they're saying that Lucifer and, and Satan and the Northern Cherub are all one. Right. So the thing is, is that when when how that the Lord the Bible, the Lord opened up the Word of God to you and you revealed it to us, and, 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 and the simplicity of it, and then when it's e it's easier to accept. I'm talking about it's easier to see. It's 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 just it's just one two three. What they're doing is going backwards. They're putting, uh, they're taking a hundred back to one, and that's why some people can't see it. But the way the Lord had, how it was revealed from Jesus Christ to you to give it to us, now it's simple. It's simple. They, because they're starting off wrong. That's why come when, let's say, just like button up a shirt in in the dark. I'm sitting in a room and button up an Oxford shirt. When I Go out. It feels like I was buttoned up that shirt right, but when I go out into the light, it's it's, it's button wrong. I have to unbutton it. I have to be unlearned. And but the thing is, until somebody opens it up like God used you to do it, then they can see it. And then they then now you have to be willing to unbutton that shirt and button it up to allow Jesus to button it up the correct way. You're right, my brother. You know, as far as this is concerned, like I would be extremely happy. Like, you know, I just put the information out there. I would be extremely happy if somebody else came around and they took it and they put it into a book format or into a video format or whatever. And, you know, like if they didn't even give me any credit for it, I don't care. You know, as long as it's yep. the truth that's being presented, that would also make me very, very happy. So, you know, like my work, like I said, it's there for anybody to take and to share as long as it's, you know, the truth is kept as the presented it the way that it is not changed, then, you know, that, that too would be okay with me, you know, somebody, somebody who has the time and the, the knowledge to do that, you know, that too works for me. It's not that, you know, I have to do everything myself. It's like that is one of the yeah. purposes of teaching is to, you know, oh, yeah. for the students to become teachers themselves. No, it's fine. It's fine. One thing I've learned about anything you submit your God, your heart to God to do is we're always about a hundred times trying to go a hundred times faster than, than Christ. Um, a little bit like our child's always trying to go ahead of his father to get to this toy store. Right. You know, and um, I've always felt like Paul's work needs to be published somehow. Yeah, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened yet. And I've and I've learned through my experiences in life and things that I've desired. God knows it's like a flame in me that's exploding, you know, as we know that feeling is that he wants us to learn patience. And uh, yeah, his time is not the world's time. I mean, Hollywood can put out a movie in a year that cost uh, half a billion dollars, you know, and in uh, God's timing, he doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, just a little caveat to that. And then the last thing was, um, um, you know, we, we, we sometimes get a little bit mixed up in the whole, like, uh, those evil people out there are trying to convince us that Satan and Lucifer and the cherub are the same. But I actually believe a lot of his people believe that lie. And it's actually kind of sad that... Because, you know, I've had some subtle experiences with some of these people, and maybe you have too. They, this says in the Bible, for no 
for no wonder for Satan can transform, it is transformed into an angel of light. I believe that Satan's actually deceived his own people to believe that he's Lucifer. You know, yes, the, 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 there is a greater understanding in it that uh, both the anointed cherub and the Lucifer, in a manner of speaking, are in Satan. They're still functioning through Satan, okay, because he yes. he is like, he has had their knowledge and their understanding inputted into him because that's where he came from, I believe. Okay, so, you know, so, yes, he, although the, the anointed cherub is locked away in hell, in Lucifer is in the bottomless pit, like we are told. So, you know what, but they are still, like, you know, their their mind, let's say, is still existent in Satan. So, you know, yes, there is truth in it that, you know, Satan, uh, and using that knowledge that he has, you know, he knows how to then disguise himself as the angel of light, as the cherub or the Lucifer or whatever, and he can pull it off. And, you know, generally his deceptions for most people fall for, they're actually not even that good when you know the word of God. Okay, but that's the sad part. Again, it comes down to that most people do not know the word of God, and that's why they fall for these deceptions. And uh, that's what we have to be. We have to stir up our pure minds, like Peter said. And, you know, we have to, you know, I like that 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 phrase that he used, stir up your minds, that our minds should never be, you know, like uh, uh, still, uh, you know, they should be fresh water is running water. And that's how it should be. It should be bubbling up all the time with the knowledge and understanding and revolving words in our mind. And that's how we become, you know, more settled and more grounded. And that's what we need to do. Grounded? Yes. Yes, grounded? Caroline. Did you say grounded? <laughs> yes. That, yes. Yeah, grounded, grounded means grounded means to be established. To have something, you know, to have a foundation, to be stable, right? That, that, that's what we mean when we use that word. Right? Yes, I right? means. What that means. But uh, you said uh, we actually found out that the word grounded also is used by the word, you know? You know, I mean, there's a lot of words and phrases that are used by the world, but that does not necessarily mean, you know, that everything that the world uses is something which is, a twisting of something that is actually maybe good and true. Okay, so we have to not automatically reject certain things because, you know, they might be out there in the world. Like, you know, something like to be in the safe wavelength, the people talk about that, or to, you know, vibrations and things like that. You know, there is certain truths in those things as well. Now, we have to understand that, you know, Satan's twisted all those things and, you know, we don't follow them the way the world does. But at the same time, you know, we don't automatically have to reject it until we have studied the subject. That's what I meant. All right. I see. Thank you yeah. for the advice. Anyhow, my friends, um, as I said before, I have somebody here that's doing some electrical work here that I have to. So uh, it's been a wonderful fellowship, but I think I am going to have to wrap this up now. Uh, so uh, again, you know, I, I thank everybody here that, uh, you know, was uh, that shared, you know, like Sebastian and Caroline and Dana and, uh, you know, uh, Sylvester, Nathan, and if somebody f uh, forgot somebody, please let me know, Terry and Vinny, you know, like I, I, I thank you. And, you know, and then, then people that are here, you know, that are uh, part of this fellowship, like Johannes and John White and Frank and Jessica. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's like uh, a little sad that Jessica's microphone is not working. Would I love to have heard from her? But, uh, but you know, I, I, I pray for all of you. I thank God for all of you. And uh, by the grace of God and by his mercy, we will be back again next weekend and uh, we shall continue to fellowship and to study. But in the meantime, I pray that you all have a wonderful and a blessed week that, you know, yes, in this life, Jesus said, we will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. So, you know, let's not forget that, that we should be of good cheer for Jesus has overcome the world. Okay, so this world is something which is all around us. Like Jared, that Caroline said, you know, in this, especially in a big city, there's all these 
distractions and noises and all kinds of stuff going on. You know, it's like being in a circus. But so what? You know, in the midst of that, we can have like this, we can be we can be under the shadow of his wings. And even in the in in a in a crowd, you know, where there's like hundreds of thousands of people, we can be totally cocooned and isolated in Jesus and be at peace and at rest out of where we are. So all right, great. Have a wonderful week. And uh let's uh continue uh with our fellowships uh next uh later on on Saturday. Okay. Thank you and God bless you. All. They told you everything, but they never told you true. They said that where you go depends on what you do. But if I were the way, pain as is a sky, because he gave his life to save both you and I. That you are not deceived. The truth is found in.